Before we begin this project, we need to make sure we can download and install the appropriate fonts that are used in this project, mainly ATC Garnet and ATC Coral. To find these fonts, log in to the Against the Clock website, and when you go to My Account and Files, at the very top, click on the My Student Resource Files, then choose the four CC titles, ATC Open Type Fonts. This will download a Reader Fonts zip file. If you double click this zip file, it'll give you a folder for the ATC 2013 fonts. And inside of the folder are all of the fonts we're gonna use for all of the projects. The two that we need to install for this one is Garnet and Coral. If we open up Garnet, you can select both of these fonts and double click on them. And this will automatically open up the font book program. Now this is mainly for using the Macintosh system. It's a little different if you're working in Windows. But once this is done, choose install font. And this will place the font into your system to be ready to use. Let's do the same thing for Coral. I'm going to go back, choose the ATC Coral, select both of those and double click and then choose install font. And then now those are ready to use for this project. To get started on project three, make sure you download the cafe print zip file and place it into the folder with your name on it. When you open the folder, just like with the previous projects, you can double click on the cafe print zip. This will uncompress the cafe folder and let's add our name to the end of this folder. We'll get rid of that dash, don't need that. Now inside of the cafe folder, you're gonna find a leaves illustrator file and a lemon JPEG. And this JPEG is what we're gonna start off doing for the first stage. So let's jump into illustrator. We'll go up to file, down to new. As with the previous ones, choose print. And we're gonna make sure letter is selected. Over on the right hand side, we're gonna give this the name of cafe logo then add your name to it. We do want our units to be in inches. We're going to keep one artboard portrait orientation. We say create. And I'm going to move my layers off to the side just so they're, they're out of the way for now. All right, so to get started, let's place that lemon image into our design. We'll go to file, down to place, We'll locate the cafe file that makes sure it's inside of the folder with your name on it. Choose the lemon JPEG and make sure template is checked on. When we say place, this will make a template layer for the lemon, but we wanna be able to see the full colors for this part. So let's open back up our layers panel, double click on the empty space right next to the name of template. This will bring up the template or the layer options and we need to uncheck dim image. When we say okay, this will give us our full image. Now's a good time to save up our document. We'll go to file and save as. Make sure you're in the cafe folder with your name on it. Make sure your cafe logo also has your name on it. We'll keep the format as Adobe Illustrator. We'll hit save and okay. Now we can continue on to creating a gradient mesh. Now to get started on creating the gradient mesh, the book is gonna ask you to outline the lemon first. So let's grab our pen tool, the top of our toolbox, and if it's not already done so, set your fill color at the bottom of your toolbox to be none by clicking on the little red dash, and set your stroke color to be black. We also wanna make sure our stroke width is set to one point. We can do that at the very top. Now to outline the lemon, Here's the quickest and easiest way of doing this. You can click once at the top, then go over to about nine o'clock on the, uh, the face of the lemon. If you're thinking about this as a clock, it'd be at the very left edge. Click once, hold down option, then click and drag into place. Let's do the same thing at the very bottom of the lemon at six o'clock. Click once, hold down option, then click and drag on the line until you get it exactly where you want it to go. Remember another way you can create curved lines is simply by clicking and dragging and moving your Bezier handles around until you get the curve that you like. You can then click and drag, 
click and drag, or you can continue using the click once, hold down option, and then drag into place. Either method that works best for you that you like will, um, will work out. Your lemon doesn't have to look 100% perfect. If it's off by a little bit, that's okay. Remember, we can use our direct selection tool, the white arrow tool, to click on the anchor points and also the Bezier curves and be able to adjust them as necessary. So if yours is off by a little bit, that's okay for what we're trying to do. The next part, let's use our selection tool, the black arrow, and select the outline that we just created. We're going to use the eyedropper tool, which is the, right here. And with the outline selected, when we click once in the middle of our lemon, it's going to pick up that lemon color and convert it completely to just that solid um, fill color of that particular shade of yellow. Now comes the magic trick. Let's create the gradient mesh so we can add a few more shadows and highlights to this shape. Go up to Object down to Create Gradient Mesh. And if you turn Preview on, you can see the changes that's going to be made. We're going to set the rows to be 8 and the columns to be 7. So it should look something like this. Now, if your rows and columns look slightly different, that's simply because you, the placement of your anchor points is different from what I have. As long as it uh, fills up the entire shape, then yours should work just, just fine. Once you're done, we'll say OK to this. We can begin uh, actually filling in the colors and working in outline mode. Now, this next section can be a little bit tricky, so pay close attention to exactly what I'm doing. What we want to do is to change the color of every point that's inside of our gradient mesh to match the colors of the lemon below it. So if it gets lighter or darker, we can assign each point to be a different color. Here's how we're going to do that. First off, let's go to View, and let's make sure our Smart Guides are turned on, but let's uncheck Snap to Point. This will make it a little bit easier to select the individual points. Also, we can go back to View, and if we go into Outline Mode, notice now we can see the, uh, the gradient mesh that we created, and also the picture of the lemon that's below it. So this is going to make it much easier to select the, uh, the individual point and the colors that we need. So to select the points, let's go to our toolbox and choose our direct selection tool. Remember with this tool, you can select individual anchor points. I'm going to zoom down to the bottom left corner so we can see what we're working with. I'm going to click away to deselect it and then hover right over this one anchor point and click and you can see that only one anchor point is now selected. With that anchor point selected, we can then go back to our eyedropper tool and pick up a color that's near that anchor point. In this case, I'm going to click right here. Now it looks like nothing's happened, but let's go back and choose a couple of more anchor points and fill those in. You'll see the change start to happen when we go back to preview mode. So a uh, good tip to know, is to hold down the command key. When you hold down command, notice that it automatically jumps back to being the direct selection tool. So command, click on the next anchor point, let go, and choose a color. Let's do the next one. Hold down command, choose the next anchor point, let go, and choose a color. Command, choose the next anchor point, let go, and choose a color. Let's see the progress that we've made so far. We can go back up to View and choose GPU Preview. And it's subtle, but you can see this bottom edge is starting to pick up on a few more shades. What we're going to do is to select each individual anchor point all the way across the lemon and then uh, change it to whatever color is underneath it. Another good tip to know is that you can hold down the Command key and turn on uh, the outline mode for just the lemon layer by holding down command and clicking on the eyeball. Notice that the eyeball turns into an outline and now we can see the outline of our lemon. I'm going to zoom in and work on the left edge first. So I've got my eyedropper tool selected, hold down command, click on one anchor point, let go, choose that, command, click, choose that, command, click, 
let go. And then it's simply a routine of selecting the anchor points and then letting go and choosing the appropriate color that's near it. If your color does get off a little bit, you can always go back and rechange it. But in general, it gets a, or does a pretty good job of selecting the color that we need. We'll quickly go through and do several more of these. Command click, let go. Command click, let go. Choose a color. Command click. Command click. Command click, let go. Let's go back to our layers, hold down command and click on the eyeball. Let's see our progress so far. So far so good. I can definitely see some lighter tones up here and some darker tones down here. Let's continue on. So command, click. This will be much more dramatic when we start picking up these lighter tones. Remember you can also hold down your space bar and that will allow you to freely move around your work. All right, I'm going to zoom back out so I can see my whole lemon. I'm going to hold down command and click on my eyeball icon. And now you can see my entire lemon has highlights all the way down to shade. And it looks like a real form of a lemon, or at least a good uh, vectorized form of it. This is a good point. We can go up to save. So let's go to file and save and continue on to the next exercise. The last part of the stage is going to show you how to edit your gradient mesh. This will come in handy if you ever want to make any direct changes to the colors or if you want to add on and change up your, uh, your artwork later on. First off, I've got my direct selection tool, my white arrow selected, and I can click on any one of the points and I can move it around into a specific spot. Additionally, with that point selected, notice that it becomes the fill color swatch and I can always click on this and change it up to be exactly whatever color I want it to be. If you want to add any rows or columns to your gradient mesh, you can use the gradient mesh tool. This tool is located right next to your gradient tool, looks like this. And when you hover over it, you can see there's a little plus sign that's next to your cursor and you can either click on a line or in, uh, in the middle of it to add a row or a column to your design. This comes in handy if you want to add more detail to what you have. Notice that when I added that, it also added the color that I had selected. So in this case, it actually made it a little bit lighter. I'm going to Command Z and undo that because I think it's okay. To be honest, I'm kind of satisfied with what I've created. But if you want to, go back and use your direct selection tool, your white arrow, and click on any of the spots that you think need to be lighter or darker or simply a different color. Once you're done with this part, we'll go back up to file and save it one more time and then continue on to stage two.